you know five like a, an advocate put it before the high court five minutes before marriage it is rape and five minutes after marriage it is not rape so this distinction is something that the court will have to look into whether this is arbitrary or whether this is permissible under the constitution the delhi high court is hearing a challenge to the validity of the ipc provision for marital rape immunity the indian express explains why the provision is in place what rights does it infringe on and what are the arguments before the court So the Delhi High Court is hearing a crucial case concerning uh, challenging of what we call the marital rape immunity in the Indian Penal Code. Uh, this is essentially uh, an exception under Section 375 of the IPC, which defines rape, which defines the circumstances in which um, a non-consensual sexual intercourse would be qualified as rape. However, the provision has a key exception. which says that uh, when uh, the sexual intercourse occurs non consensually um, even between a married man and his own wife uh, who is above the age of 18 um, so that would not qualify as rape so this is a provision that is being challenged before the delhi high court as a provision the marital rape immunity is not uncommon to uh, a lot of common law countries which derive its origins from the english legal system so this was put in place when the indian penal code was enacted um, and the colonial era law is now being challenged it has continued in our books all these years uh, because it, this is the first occasion in which it is being challenged in court so this challenge is even being made possible because in the last few years we've seen a slew of judgments from the supreme court of india uh, which have sort of tilted the balance in favor of women so the marital rape exception has been uh, struck down by the house of lords uh, way back in 1991 Uh, Canada brought in a law in 1983 South Africa brought one in 1993 Australia brought one in 1981 and these um a similar the similar the same provision in all these countries has been reversed so in India this is the first time that the marital rape immunity is being challenged in court so the key question really is whether um to what extent to to what end can the court allow this immunity to continue um wh- what are the reasons for this immunity to continue uh, one of course that we've heard often in public commentary is that um removing the immunity to marital rape will destroy the institution of family as we know um you know w- what is the future of marriage uh, as an institution if a wife can sue her husband for rape so these are the these are some of the questions that are being um, addressed in the hearings before the delhi high court uh, so the petitioners have also argued that uh, this classification of marriage as a criteria is uh, arbitrary and um, goes against the right to equality uh, which is in article 14 of the constitution one of the important concepts here is uh, that there is the wife gives an irrevocable consent uh, in perpetuity uh, once she gets married so this concept again is based on the notion that upon marriage um, a wife is obligated to perform certain duties which is the obligation to procreate which which is the obligation to fulfill the husband's desires so it essentially there is a legal fiction here which assumes that the wife has no right to say no to the husband so these might have been um, ideas that were prevalent in the society when the indian penal code was um, enacted but cut to 2021 these seem very outdated ideas and it is a question whether uh, the law should in fact permit this or the law should in fact allow this however when you look at it um, from the government side uh, the delhi government the central government have defended this law um, and would prefer to continue with this marital rape immunity uh, as far as the central government is concerned uh, the central government is of the opinion that uh, there is a criminal law review process that is underway uh, you know through a committee set up by the ministry of home affairs so um, the central government feels that being a sensitive issue marital rape should have much more public discourse 
um, and and you know there, there should be more conversation about it before uh, the court decides one way or the other. But uh, if you come to the Delhi High Court, um, their key argument is that if the court um, strikes down this marital rape immunity provision, then it would create a new offense. So since courts can't create a new offense, um, you know, the you know the Delhi High Court should not, in fact, strike down the marital rape immunity. This has been the argument of the Delhi High Court. Uh, so the High Court also appointed uh, two amicus curiae, you know, who are um, neutral parties to assist the court in cases of uh, this magnitude. And um, another crucial thing, you know, a crucial conversation that has come up in these uh, hearings is whether the state can in fact say um, protecting the institution of family is a reason why we should keep the marital rape immunity or protecting um, the institution of family is why uh, is a reason for continuing the violation of rights of women. So this is something that the court will have to um, necessarily look into. And this is important because um, in, this is the test that the court will apply to balance the rights. Uh, so if the state has an interest in a particular issue, say, for example, national security, public order or public health, these are um, legitimate interests of the state. And the state wants to enact a legislation which could encroach into uh, the personhood, the fundamental rights of a of an individual. So the courts will have to see how strong the interest of the state is uh, to protect the rights of the individual, to allow the encroachment of the rights of the individual. And in this case, now protecting the uh, institution of marriage, the court will have to see whether that itself is uh, can be in fact the state's interest. Why should the state have any interest in protecting um, marriage as an institution? <laughs>